Hey everyone, it's Jessica Chen Feng, and just wanted to invite you to our living room this evening. It's finally quiet in our home, so I have a moment to reflect and just share with you some of the things that are that have been on my mind and my heart recently. I also want to say thanks for joining us with these devotionals this month. So today, the thing I was thinking about is that we could reflect on our bodies, specifically our Asian American bodies and what it's like to live in our bodies and how has it shaped our experience of ourselves, of others, and of God. We know that these days there's a lot going on in relation to what our bodies trigger in other people with all the anti-Asian racism, the hatred, um, the things that we represent, the things that we trigger and activate, and um, you know, all of it not ba based on any kind of truth, but there is fear that people are responding to, there's disgust, there's anger and hatred, and even though this might be painful, just for a few minutes today, I'm going to just sit here with us together. And I really want us to reflect on what is the impact of, of these dynamics, whether we've encountered it personally, we witnessed it, heard it, or we're reading about it on the news all the time. How does this impact us as we experience it for ourselves and those that we love? So for a lot of us as Asian Americans, is it's a season of increased racism and violence, and it also activates all of our previous experiences with the racism. And so, you know, for a moment, today, some of you might know that I'm a marriage and family therapist, and one of the areas I've been practicing a lot more in is our brain's response to things like um, trauma and stress and a few things to share about what happens the way that we respond to racism to mistreatment with rejection and um, you know I'm gonna be citing some of Dr. Brene Brown's work on shame but a lot of this for us it triggers a deep sense of shame feelings like I'm never good enough um, I don't fit in, I'm never gonna belong, I won't ever be valued as much as this other person for this set of reasons. And um, it's, it's always just underneath the surface. So some of you might have been reading Kathy Park Hong's book, Minor Feelings, and there there's an excerpt from this book that I wanted to read for us that I think captures this inner world of shame um, related to identity as an Asian American. Racial self-hatred is seeing yourself the way the whites see you, which turns you into your own worst enemy. Your only defense is to be hard on yourself, which becomes compulsive, and therefore a comfort to peck yourself to death. You don't like how you look, how you sound, you think your Asian features are undefined, like God started pinching out your features and then abandoned you. When I read that the first time, it felt so painfully and deeply true. And this phrase especially, pecking ourselves to death. And I think it's really important here because you know, any, anyone who's looked at the research on mental health and um, mental health outcomes with Asian Americans and you know, issues that Asian Americans have, um, in the past, some of this research used to be more focused on the problems of Asian American culture, Asian American families, and it's really easy to internalize essentially the racism and think, oh, you know, we have the Asian American culture, you know, East Asian American families, South Asian culture, um, you know, th this part of our family, something is wrong with it, right? There's something inherently wrong with this part of our cultural practice or this value system within our family. And while it's true, I think 
um, our, our Christian faith does examine all types of cultural practices to see if it's in line with the Word of God and the heart of God. Um, at the same time, I think racism really makes it messy for us where we might mistake, you know, um, wanting to be like a white American, wanting to be more like the mainstream, whatever that means to us physically in our family's practices. We grow up, whether it's a few years in the U.S. or it's a lifetime, always comparing, always contrasting. And so um, what I wanted to share is oftentimes when we live with shame, there are, are three responses that we're inclined to do. And Brene Brown talks about these three things. We move against it, we move away from it, or we move toward it. And, and I was reflecting a little bit about what that might look like for the Asian American. And so I, this moving against, what she means by this is you, you show up with, um, with, with hatred, with rejection, you are upset with, you know, whether it's the person who treated you poorly and um, you wanna fight it. And that's what the shame triggers in us. And so we might shame other people. Um, but I think what happens a lot is that we end up moving against ourselves. We shame ourselves even more. Um, we reject ourselves. We hate our own bodies. We disassociate with our own racial or ethnic identity. We feel bitterness toward perpetrators. And so that's one thing um, that we're inclined to do with shame. Another thing is moving away from it. So, you know, shame is this terrible feeling and so we don't want to feel it at all. So we try to hide. Um, we, um, you know, the Asian American experience oftentimes is one of invisibility and not being recognized, not being seen, being mistaken for another Asian person at your workplace or other classmate, never being noticed by your classmates or your professors. Um, so, so it's this shame of not being truly known or um, recognized. And so I think what also happens is we become invisible to ourselves, uh, which is really hard. The last thing that we do with shame is that we move toward it. And it's this interesting thing. And, and actually what Brene Brown talks about is we try to make up for the things that we, we feel ashamed about. So we work even harder. We try to please the group of people that um, we're worried about feeling shame around. And I think this has a lot to do with our model minority trying to live up to whatever that has been in our lives so we strive to belong we strive to be accepted we want to be approved and seen be good enough um, we don't want to cause trouble and be ridiculed and so um you know i think i'm just touching on the surface of some of these things but um, i think it can be helpful to really reflect on you know, this Asian American body that belongs to me, belongs to us, whether it's our phenotype, what it triggers in other people, or maybe it's the shape of our whatever facial feature, the shape of our bodies, the, our height, you know, our weight, our um, muscles, our, whatever it is that you're not um, petite enough, you're not you know, masculine enough, there, there's so much out there that has dictated um, expectation and exclusion um, toward the Asian American. And so um, we've all been carrying that for a long, long, long time. And I think it's really easy to just allow it to live right under the surface of our skin. So today, um, just for this moment, I wanted to invite us to reflect on what these experiences of racism, these assumptions of Asian Americanness, how it has shaped our sense of self and how it shapes our behaviors. 
and how it shapes even what we think God sees in us. So if you're comfortable, I wanted to invite you to close your eyes and sit comfortably and just notice in your body where you carry pain, rejection, tension, any sense of loss. Um, a side note, a lot of Asian Americans, we carry tension in our bodies. And so a lot of our stress, our feelings of being down, our anxiety, it shows up in our bodies. And so we get headaches, back aches, stomach aches, heart palpitations, um, lower back pain, all kinds of things that show up. And so, you know, just take a moment and scan your body you know, from the top of your head down at the tips of your toes. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth and noticing you know, this pain, this loss, this grief. Where in your body do you hold that? And really honor just the challenges, the difficulty of living with that. And in this moment, we share together the truth that all of this matters to God. God has been with us. God sees what Asian Americans endure, um, not just in this season of this pandemic, this global pandemic, but historically. So many seasons, periods, individual experiences, community, you know, throughout the United States, a lot of pain, a lot of lives lost, a lot of families broken apart because of racism and xenophobia against Asian Americans. So, you know, our bodies carry that pain. And so let's allow God to speak to us and to sit with us. Um, I wanted to leave us with a passage that has always really been a gift to me. And I just want to invite you to let God speak to you whatever God would like to. This is Isaiah 61, verse 7. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. So if you have a few more minutes of your day, maybe take out that passage and read it and, you know, sit and allow God to speak to you. What might be this metaphorical double portion? What might be the inheritance that God is showing you in your life specifically, in your family's life, in our lives shared together as Asian American Christians? And instead of shame, rejecting ourselves, withdrawing, or striving endlessly, how can we move toward these truths that God's word has for us?